It's, it's an interesting question. Um, it's more of a statement, but it's true. A lot of directors do treat actors as if they are puppets or little robots and treat them that way. See them that way, treat them away. Big problem. And that question, which I did read earlier, I know that's another part of it, is how do you get past that um, way of thinking with directors? Directors who treat characters as if they are puppets. These are directors who, from my experience, do know what they want. In fact, they will tell you. They will tell you, the actors, exactly what they want. I want you to play it this way. I want you to be angry. I want you to be sad. I want you to be conflicted here. I want some tears here. They have very clear visions of what they want. So it's not just that they see actors as puppets who should give them what they want. They are also seeing the characters in a very limited, myopic way. One performance. Now, my goal of working with directors is to open up their minds from that singular performance to a range of performances around that territory. That's one thing that I work with a lot of directors, and I can help a lot of directors get past that. Most directors do not want to see actors that way. But also, many, many directors are feel incapable or challenged on how to work with actors, how to communicate with actors without giving results like that. So to approach that from a teaching side is one thing, but to approach it from the actor's world, because a lot of you actors know you run into directors who will see you that way, even treat you that way, and give you the, those results, you're, challenged. you're not going to change that director. Your challenge is a little different now. You have to listen to the director. Try to understand what it is that he or she is really asking for. What it is that he or she is feeling that is going on inside the characters in the scene that is going to bring you to that result. And then you have to go back to the character yourself, by yourself, or with your buddy, if you're working with a buddy in an interrogation, and help build that aspect of the character in order to give that director the result that they're looking for. Work with the director. Don't resist the director. Don't isolate yourself. Work with the director. This question is about preparing the actor or actors for the interrogation process. What do I do? Do I explain it to them beforehand? Do I let them know that something different is going to happen, that I'm going to treat them in a different way? To really, the blunt answer to that is no, I don't do any of that. My experience has been over the years of uh, using this technique and experimenting with this technique is one thing is if I start to explain the technique to the actors so that they can understand what I'm doing, I've actually done myself and the actors a disservice because now the actor's mind has been so activated with this idea of a new technique and talking to the characters or the committee or whatever I've said to them that their mind is full of that information. And for most actors, it's like fascinating. Oh, this sounds good. I'm really excited. Now I've actually activated the, the actor's mind. And there's very little room for the character. And what will happen is when I start interrogating them, you can see the actor sort of listening to me and trying to figure out what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and trying to understand the process even more. It's better for me and perhaps for you too, to do none of that. The easy way to prepare an actor for the interrogation is to ask them one simple question. Let's say you have an actor named Jack, and he's playing a character named George. And you say to Jack, okay, let's, we're ready to rehearse. Uh, Jack, can I talk to George for a minute? 
That's the simple question. Can I talk to George? Asking permission to talk to the character. Almost every actor I know will always say, sure. And then you start addressing George. You say, George, and you start asking some very simple questions. George, how long have you been in a relationship with Martha? Well, this long. I see. And, and did you know her before that? You're just asking very simple, almost interview type questions. Suddenly you have the character responding. Suddenly you have the actor in the world you want them in responding and thinking only as the character. And you can move from that interview into an interrogation, an interrogation which is putting pressure, as you know, on the character. You can put a little bit of pressure on it. Just doing that, and just doing that much will make a world of difference. And you've done it without asking permission other than, can I talk to George? That's the permission you have explained nothing. And many a times when I've worked with actors a lot, especially in plays where there's weeks and weeks of rehearsal, eventually we get into a discussion of this technique I'm using after they've been doing it for weeks. And they'll ask me, oh, how, why does this work that? Now they're curious because they've been in the middle of it. And that's a fine time to discuss it with them. Thank you. Good question. Do I always start with an interview? This is a little bit of a reminder that the interrogation um, process has two aspects to it, sort of. One is the interview, just asking simple questions that are easy for the character to answer. And the question is, do I always start with an interview? Depends. It depends a lot. It depends on, actually, to be a really... <laughs> <laughs> really honest. It depends on my instinct at the moment. I'm standing there in front of that actor and I'm about to go into interrogation and sometimes I just plunge in. And that I think is an intuitive, instinctive response that I have to that actor going, he's fine. He's ready to go. I can feel that he's ready to plunge into those deep waters and let's go. Sometimes if I feel like there's a little they're tenacious or uncertain, then I'll start with an interview. Sometimes if I start with an interrogation and I feel like they're a little, over, little too overwhelmed, I'll back off and go back to an interview a little bit to soften it and then go back into interrogation. It's all done by instinct. This is a crucial part of this process, really crucial, is that while you're doing it, you are not following any specific rules, plans, sequencing, or anything. You're following your instincts, and you're following that actor that you're talking to, that character that's coming to you. You're in response to them, and you're going on your instinct, what it feels appropriate or the best thing to do at that moment. Ah, there's the question. Do I have a plan at all? Do I come with a plan at all? I do have a plan. When I go into interrogation, like you saw in the clip, I do have a plan. And I can ex explain to you sort of generally what that plan is. Because that plan is not a plan of this question and then this question and this question. It's not even more general, this topic and then this topic and then this topic. The plan is, what do I want to um, explore? And what do I want to create? What do I want to explore inside these two characters? And what do I want to create? Now, the, what I want to create, I always know what that is. It's very simple. I want to create chaos. Now, chaos inside a character is just a multitude of feelings, thoughts, emotions, belief systems, expectations, dreams, fantasies, and fears that are all crashing in together and sort of wrestling inside the character. That's the chaos. The chaos that, quite honestly, we all live in every day. I want to create that chaos. Then, the exploration part, I want to explore certain aspects of the, the character or the relationship. I know that. Like in the clip you saw, I want to explore 
where this relationship is now, how they feel about each other now, their sense of loyalty to each other now, how much they really love each other now. That's I want to I want to explore just that aspect of the relationship and create the chaos and then go into the scene. That's the only plan. There's no plan for specific questions, topics, or anything. Mm-hmm.